Cool. We're doing the second one of this where I write a joke with you. Hell yeah. Well, my first joke ate shit. I tried it for weeks. Nobody cared. Even one guy commented after our, our episode and was like, I love the, the show. It's a great concept, but that joke will never work. And he was fucking right. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Well, uh, well, it's funny because I, I like framed that first one like it would be a multiple episode thing with all these different kinds of artists. And it's I stopped at you. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> mostly because it was hard to get people. And I think I had my set my sight set too high. And then I was like, sure. and I just like get interested in multiple things. But we're it's back. A, it's a lot of work. Yeah. But we're back with another one. And uh, I know you have like the comedy classes on Patreon. So yeah. I thought, you know, cool way to promote that. We're blowing up. And all your comments were like, oh, he'll do any pod. I'm like, you know what? I got to step it up. Now <laughs> I have uh, extra production layers here. I have friends calling me like, stop doing these pods because then they call me and go, hey, Norman did it. You got to do it. And I'm right. like, and then they're like, no, that, that means don't do it. I see. I see. Yeah. I've, I've muddied the waters. Um, yeah. And then I read uh, some of the, I, I, I put a thousand bottles of hairspray in because a lot of the comments were like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, Look what I can do. You know the Stort from Mad TV? Yeah. They said I, which I've got that before, but I was like, I just got to like. The hair looks great. Thanks. You, thanks. Did, you nailed they'll, it. They'll find something. They'll find something. I um, mean, your voice, your face, yeah. whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, so like I, since that one too, I've been doing stand up. Like I, I wasn't really doing it at the time. But, and so now I have more questions to oh, ask you. Great. I'm an uh, open casket. Have you, <laughs> have you, have you like had any new comedic breakthroughs or like insights since then really or well i've been uh i put this half hour on netflix and it was like a it was like my big a since since uh, we did this i think that was before the netflix yeah shot. it was so yeah it was pandemic time it was hard to build material not a lot of shows were cooking crowds weren't really coming out everybody had covid material so i i wanted to have a good half hour so i gave them like my cream of the crop a shit that I was working on then. So I'm pretty much, I was pretty much back to zero. I had a couple ideas and a B, a couple BC jokes. So I've been like going all in back to writing new stuff and it's so hard, but I also, I'm having that feeling of like, oh, I'm getting momentum. I can feel like that little line I can use there. And then that joke, I thought of it in the shower. I finally cracked the code on it. So I'm, I'm building a, an act again and I've already got about, 28 minutes of killer awesome. stuff so i was fun. talking to a comic yesterday that was saying that like like do you find that it's hard to write if you're just like working hard doing stand-up every night and writing every day because you're not like going out and living life and getting sources or sure. source material from things within life or? i think there's truth to that but once you go because you're going to go out anyway you're going to have to get a slice of pizza or go to the bank or the post office so that shit's going to happen so a lot of people are like, I need to go to Costa Rica and, and skydive or, or rappel off a mountain so I can get some material. You're like, nah, nah, it's the little shit, but it's going to happen anyway. So all these people are like, I got to quit writing and live my life a little bit. Like, nah, nah, you're just a lazy queef. Yeah. You know, you just don't want to write. Right. So I think it's better to write. The life part will happen anyway. Your mom's going to call you. Your girl's going to have a miscarriage. Things will happen. So you don't need to go okay. live all that bullshit. Okay. Yeah, I asked that too because I had like a script writing teacher at school that was like, "You got like all your scripts suck because you guys don't. You just like look at your phones and you." Well, you that yeah, that could part, be something. Yeah, and he's like, "You like go on the train, no phone, and just look at people, and you'll be so much better at writing." I was like, oh, "That's yeah. kind of cool." The you know? phone is more of a detriment than the the not living. Yeah. You know, the phone is a cunt that really takes your your brain power. I was I looked at like old stuff of mine, like old notebooks. In 2008, seven, mm -hmm. I was right. I was thinking of so many ideas because your brain has to. Nothing gets your brain rolling like boredom. Yeah, and that's the least we have no boredom now because we're you can just scroll on TikTok and all that shit. So it's interesting you said that. I I saw a YouTube video where they said uh, it was it was like one of those science channels. And it was like yeah, they did a study where they had a bunch of people that weren't bored try and be creative and a bunch of people that they made be bored first like they bored the shit out of them and then tried to make them do creative things and they were like exponentially more creative because your brain is like fucking like we need to like you just like go inward because you have to entertain yourself so <laughs> i'm like did he freeze is wow <laughs> that's great you gotta send me that link i will i think i think it's mark rober if you know his channel mark, uh, was he a nasa guy Yes. That guy's great. Yeah. I love that guy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, no, there's... Oh, no, no, no. Wait. Mark Rober is the NASA guy. There's the other one is Vertrazium or something. Oh, I don't know. You I know don't... him, too. He's got, like, Trazium. super viral videos. Yeah. Sounds like a like a medication. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a weird name. I don't yeah, know what I can't it is, get it up but on the trazium. Um, yeah, and then I wanted to ask you too, like something I've been. I mean, also I've yet to like, you know, I've been, I'm still super new to this, but like I've been, I'll notice when I have something that works, after like a, a certain amount of time, I just hate saying that joke. Like, yeah, that happens. Yeah, that does. But you gotta hone it. I mean, you know, it's like a relationship. It, you know, it's a great relationship, but it does get still. It happens. It's inevitable. But you gotta put it in her ass. You gotta spice it up, and that's the same with that bit. You gotta like, you gotta just fall in love with it again, and, and keep looking for new tags, and maybe it's not over, and change an inflection in it next time, or open with it, or close with it. Dude, you gotta mix it up a little bit, but. A lot of comics now they they get bored of their bits, which is understandable, and then they drop them. Like you got that's what you put on the special, and that's what's going to get honed. Right. You know, Louis had that whole thing about how a, a bit is like a samurai sword, and you have to just you hammer the shit out of it, and then one day it's smooth and perfect. And he's like, you shouldn't be done with a bit until it's that smooth sword. Interesting. I guess social media really plays a big role in whether or not that. The posting, my God, the posting. It's a disease. Yeah. Yeah, because you get you get all keyed up, you get all excited. Those endorphins when hey, thirty eight thousand, hey, it hit hundred k. I bet yeah. it's like now you're more worried about the hundred k views, which is good, but you should be working on the next bit. Yeah, I know. Well, that and uh, so I've had three stand up clips go viral. Like I, I also have like a TikTok background, so I knew sure. how to edit them and stuff. But like I do find myself like because the three of them were like about. They they involve social media and apps, so I was able to like Photoshop things Ooh, and like. That helps. So, but I do find myself now like, oh, what other social? And I'm like, oh, I can't be making bits for TikTok. I feel like that's like kind of a like I'm writing for TikTok yes. and not for the audience. You know what I mean? Like exactly. that's I feel like that's a bad habit to get into. Yeah, it's like those comics who play to the comics in the room. Right. And they're like, how about uh, Bob Johnson? He He's a stinky bitch. Yeah. And everybody's like, we know Bob Johnson. He does stink. You know? Yeah. That happens a lot of open mics, yeah, too. Yeah, you can't go to Cleveland Improv, and you bring up the Bob Johnson chunk, and they go, who the fuck's that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, so what do you think about, like, because like, I was wondering, for open micers, like, I'll shill it to them. I'm like, yeah, like, it's like a virtual open mic, you know? Like, is sure. It, do you think they, is it, should they post clips? Is that... I think it's. I think. Look, I get it. It's a different time. It's the name of the game. So yeah, I think post clips just to be relevant, just to have an online presence. But I would. I think the stage and making audiences laugh in real time is is the. That's what we're trying to really do here. Right. I mean, you put the clips up to get views, so people will buy your tickets. I see. Yeah. That's what you really want is those those butts and seats. I mean, let's take a great comic uh, like Mulaney. You see a lot of clips from him? No. I mean, if he has a clip online, it's because somebody ripped it off his special and put it on their TikTok because they liked it so much. And that's great because that spreads the, the word on him, but he's not posting a lot of shit. So then when he comes to your town, you got to go see him. Mm. Or Bill Burr. How many Bill Burr clips? Do you think Bill Burr's sitting there editing on Final Cut Pro every night with little glasses on, you know, and a <laughs> yeah, cup of tea? Yeah, no, right. I don't think so. Yeah, that's true. But he also has the... He has the years of uh, the wealth yeah. of, of uh, content. No, but but still, I trust your opinion on that. But like, I think, keep posting, but again, it's about the, the more important thing. It's like, look, you can post a gym video that people like, but are you working out? You're yeah, right. you're building muscle. You know, that's what it, what it all comes down to. That's a great point. Um, Sometimes you need an analogy to really bring it home. Well, that's why I see, like, you'll do this, and a lot of, like, uh, I'll see even Schultz does it, where it's like, you'll just do, you'll post, like, the crowd work stuff, because that's... Yes, you don't burn anything. Yeah, and then it's like, you're not going to reuse the crowd work that you, you know, used on somebody. Totally, totally, and it's very shareable, and people go, oh, I got I to gotta send my friend this, and then they, they go, oh, who's this guy, and then now we're off and running. Right, and then you've been doing the Q&A stuff at the end of... Uh, yeah, that's it, yeah. I do my act... For 45 minutes, and then I do a Q&A for about 10, 15, and people just like, abortion, Amber Heard, and boy, you got to be on your feet, you got to think of shit, and it's topical, so you're going to burn it anyway. I'm not going to have an Amber Heard joke in my act in two years, you know? Right. So yeah, that's that's the move there. That's the scariest part for me, too, is like, it feels like, like the written stuff is like, it feels like a, like, a, you know, in, in cave diving, there's like a guide rope. And it's like if it's because it's super dark and yeah. it's like hold on to the rope because if you get lost you're gonna drown. Right. So right. like the written material feels like a guide rope and it's like if something happens in the audience, or like I'm, I'm expected to like say something that's not written, it feels like letting go of that guide rope. I'm ah, like, Fuck you. Like, totally. I, and so that's cool that you do the Q and A because it feels like you're just like all right, you know, this could go 
it's up to me in the moment. You know, totally. And I think people feel that when they watch it, they're like, "Damn, that 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 could have gone weird, or that got tense, or she was pissed, or whatever it is." So you get that that sponta- spontaneity and that that weird tension. And then you've been. I saw it, it leads you to into doing like stories because like you don't normally do long form stories on stage. No, I'm too scared. I'm a coward. I need I need laughs every thirty seconds. Is that what it is? That's what it is. Yeah. And I just assume no one cares about my story. Who gives a fuck? I always think it's interesting. Like, I know, but I hate myself. <laughs> well, it's funny. You like. Crispy and Jason were at like a. I did a show at a donut shop, and I was like, "Jeez, I have bragging." <laughs> yeah, right. And I fucking I tried. There was like a story that happened to me like a few days before, and I told my friends, and it worked at an open mic. It was getting laughs. I'm like, "Cool, I'll just try this. It'll burn five to ten minutes." And there was just no laughs, and I'm just up there. Once I've started it, I can't finish, or I can't just be like, "Ah, fuck this story." Yeah, exactly. That's what I hate too. You're committed to it. You're yeah, stuck in it. and you can bail on it halfway, but it. Doesn't look great. You're yeah. Like, All right. Fuck that. That sucked. Dude. Yeah. Carry yeah. on. Uh, by the way, you do a show at a donut pa- uh, donut shop. Yeah, your joke's gonna have a few holes in it. Ah, uh, pretty. I w- that's good. I was up there try- or like beforehand. I was trying to think of. Uh-huh. Oh, really? that's <laughs> the dumbest joke of all time. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was better than what I had. Uh- <laughs> uh, well, I did say it actually didn't get a laugh. It got a laugh at with the comics, but not with mm. the audience, which was like. I forget how I said it. It was like, oh, there's a one donut minimum at this show. And they were like, ah, yeah, that's fun. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, you know, don't glaze over it. <laughs> all right, we need to sprinkle a few punchlines in there. All right, all right, we're having fun. It's so fun. Like, it's funny that you could do that because here I am. i literally been writing in my notes. I printed out, like, just things I notice are funny, like, or what makes things funny. Mm-hmm. So, like, <laughs> oh, wow, nerd alert. I know. Well, what was also for this, like, once I started uh-huh. doing it, I was like, oh, it would be cool to, like, whip it out i guess sure but, uh, like um no i love this shit i'm a big comedy dweeb. well yeah well we talked about with the last one like comparing two unlike things makes things funny you know you do that a lot where it's yes. like like with the last one the weed and the pepper right right big comparison guy big, yeah big parallel guy there's a lot of parallels between two completely different things that are fun to connect yeah and then you called me before you got here and you were like uh you were like, oh, your apartment's so east. I'm, I'm in the river. And then, like, it made me laugh because, like, it's just you're exaggerated something. Like, you, like when you exaggerate something, like, I just visualized you trudging through the river. Like, to Yes. Get, so, Exaggerations like, are funny. Yeah, and then you get a visual out of it. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, uh, what's, uh, what's the, Carlin, no. Louis has that bit where he's like, uh. Yeah, I was on an airplane, and this lady was, like, fighting with her husband, and she was like, can we change seats? And he was like, ah, uh, and they, they were, like, fighting over him. He was between them, and he was like, ah, and so I just, I got off the flight. I didn't go on the flight, <laughs> yeah. and, and then the plane took off and hit the World Trade Center. <laughs> right. Like, obviously it didn't, but he had to up it at the end. Yeah. And, and now, of course, in Louis style, he made it about 9-11. Right. Well, what's weird about that, too, like, I've noticed, so I've, uh, uh, the things I've had do well, on like TikTok and on stage are stories that I've made up. Whereas yeah, a real story is not. But if I lie, somehow it works because I guess I've like made it so that it's like, I, I don't know. It's I, humorous. I mean, there's some people like, you gotta be honest up there. No, I mean, the truth just sometimes this isn't funny. So you have to make it funny. You're, it's called being creative. So right. you created a different scenario. I have a joke about a, a dog, wa- a blind guy with a seeing eye dog. And the guy yelled at me. That never happened. I was wondering I, that. I get a whole bit out of it. But it's kind of believable enough. And But, you know, I'm trying to do comedy here. Well, I think people, like, it's still, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it has to feel somewhat believable. Yes, yes. Like, it could function as a lie. Like, it'd be yeah. like, all right. I. It either has to be somewhat believable or insanely ridiculous. Like, uh, Stephen Wright has that joke where he's like, yeah, I... Uh, Took a flight today. I got off the plane. I forgot to unbuckle my safe, safe seat belt, and now I'm just dragging the plane <laughs> yeah, down the yeah. runway. And you're like, "That's such a funny image," but you know, he's not dragging a plane, right? And, I, and then he makes you imagine it, which makes it like, like I've noticed yes. that with certain bits that really make me laugh out loud. It's like they put the image in my mind somehow. Totally, totally. Yeah, um, the imagery is funny. Um, what else? Oh, and so like the other thing that I have noticed can work is like cause and effect right so like you've seen the one where uh like my aunt died and i her facebook got hacked yeah it's a good that's like one of your big bits 
So my aunt died last month and uh, my very much alive aunt started signing in to the dead aunt's Facebook profile and posting updates. Hey guys, miss you from heaven. Hope you're well. But then she's so computer illiterate, she got the Facebook hack. So now my dead aunt is posting things like $10,000 giveaway, comment avocado. <laughs> And people are commenting, this is so cruel, she's dead. And my dead aunt responds, DM me, you won. And so it's it's a whole thing. That's the one that worked on like, yeah, it works on stage, but it also did well online. I, I don't know, it's weird that I go back to the online. Like it's like, I, if it works on TikTok, I'm assuming that it's- It's resonating. Yeah. So anyway, but like the only real thing was that like my aunt accidentally signed into the Alive Aunt's Facebook. And in my head, I'm like, like I wrote down cause and effect. I'm like, well, what would be funny? It's like, oh, like if she acts and it would be realistic is like if she got the Facebook hacked. Like, and so like I've noticed like, oh, if you have like a base thing that happens, like your premise, like yeah. if you just walk through what could happen. Yes, yes. That kind of works. That's great, that's great. And then here's one other thing I wanted to share. Please, with you. please, bring it on. All right, cool, I'm glad. Um, so another thing I thought I realized the other day, you know the gay porn bit? Where I'm like a camera guy's for gay porn. Ah, I love this. Is my this is my, my might be my favorite bit of yours. Sick. All right. Cool. That, thank you. You think there's camera guys for gay porn that are straight that just have to film like? <sighs> <laughs> Can I get some more light on his asshole, please? Somebody told me they thought that was homophobic, and I was like, I don't think you could be a camera guy for gay porn and be homophobic. But then I was like, that'd be kind of funny if he was just like, this is wrong. <laughs> so can I get some more light on his asshole? Please? Um, well, basically the bit is that I'll just say it just in case is like, yeah. uh, do you think there's camera guys for gay porn that are straight and have to just be like, ah, you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, That's such a funny image. Right. And so, well, what I realized was, and, and then the follow up, and this is what I said to you before, like in terms of like PC culture, I was like, oh, I feel like people think that's homophobic. So it's like, oh, well, well, I'll just pretend like somebody said that to me. Nah, uh -huh. they're smart. smart so way my out refute of it. was like, well, that'd be kind of funny if like a homophobic guy was filming gay porn because he'd be like, ah, oh, this is wrong, like while yeah. he's filming. But I need the gig. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. And so that made me realize that another funny thing is to take somebody and put them in a position, the or, or take a thing and put the last person you'd want in that position. So like, oh yeah. So like a, a straight guy filming gay porn. Uh, my friend and like kind of said this the other day like who's the hr guy for porn hub like uh -huh. like if you're the hr guy for porn hub oh that's, gonna... that's great that's great it, 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 this was shout out brandon this is his bit uh ah shit but uh, like Chappelle, like the the black racist that yes black. yes exact fish out of water basically yeah yeah so that was something i realized where it's like oh you could do that with everything like who's the last person that should break dance and it's like right uh, or who's the last person that should it's like biden yeah, you know, it'd be the yeah, last person yeah. You break dance. Yeah, exactly. That's that's comedy. You're bringing a, you're bringing the most ridiculous example. And then it works for even like regular stories, like Ratatouille. Who's the last person that should be a chef? A rat. Yes. He, rats aren't allowed in the kitchen. Yeah. Did you see that movie Coda? I didn't see Coda. It's no. it's a little it it got good reviews, but it's a little Disneyfied and cheesy. But it's a girl who lives with a, her family's deaf. Her mom, dad, and brother are all deaf, and she's not deaf. She's the little sister, daughter, who's not deaf. So she does all the communicating for them. And, of course, she's an amazing singer. That's the movie. She's this beautiful uh, voice. And she's like, I have a recital today, and I want you to come. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we can't hear or whatever. Could be the goal. Yeah. yeah. So like, she's trying to be a singer, and then they're like, we don't, we don't care. <laughs> yeah. get, 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 whatever deaf people sound like, and that's the whole movie. So yeah, it's that whole, that whole like juxtaposition of this situation with this character. Like they're so like at odds yeah kind of. yeah right right you know it's the classic look who's coming to dinner it's the rich white family and the daughters were dating a black guy and now now we got high yeah. jinks and sue which i guess it's like it almost means all like conflict is like another no uh, yeah, yeah right i don't know i'm just like no no con well you need conflict for a bit like somebody told me once that every bit is a story you know like you talk okay you set up all right what if one of the the filmers that a porn is in a gay porn is, right is homophobic and now you do a, a act out or a scenario with that and that's a little story and then the punchline is like the ending of the story right how does that end 
Um, so it ended with the homo, like, because it starts with the straight guy, and then I go to the homophobic guy filming, and well, with the straight guy, like, he's like, ah, he's like, can I get some more light on his asshole? But with the homophobic guy, it's, you know, this is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but could I get some more light on his asshole? So it's like the same right, punchline, right. but it's like, I just assumed it was funny because it's like, well, he's got the same problem, which yeah. is like he's lighting the. Right. Norm always said if the setup and the punchline are the same and it's still funny, that's impressive. And that's like one of the hardest kind of bits to write. But sometimes it can work. Interesting. Well, I mean, but it's funny because it doesn't always get as much of a laugh on that second same punchline yeah as it's like a ah yeah cool right right right. good job (laughs) well well the big cardinal sin in comedy is saying the same word twice but sometimes you can you got to know the rules to break them so sometimes saying the wrong word twice or the same word twice is is a good move Mm. you know what i'm saying like going the other way the thing you're not supposed to do sometimes is the thing you're supposed to do norm had this bit about uh so uh julia roberts was married to Lyle Lovett and they got a divorce because she was married to Lyle Lovett. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. He said Lyle Lovett as the setup and the punchline, and that's because you almost amazing. expect something else. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So he's like subverted your expectations by doing the same thing. Right. It's like in a in a in a movie where they go, "This is the bad guy." No, this is the bad guy. No, this is the bad guy. And it was this guy all along. You know, they keep flipping on it. You can do that with bits. He's got another great bit that keeps flipping where he goes. Uh, something, something, women are bad drivers. And the crowd goes, boo. And he goes, well, I have you know a woman wrote that joke. And they go, oh. And he goes, ah, I'm kidding. We don't hire women. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it goes here, 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 here. And it almost, and it's funny because it like points out their hypocrisy. Because they're like, yes. oh, it's okay if she said it. Yeah, <laughs> no, that too. You get that in there too, which is fun. Um, Pointing out hypocrisy is one of my favorite styles of comedy. I know. Well, that's what's cool. That's what, because like, or, so somebody commented on one of my the catfish thing I did, I mean, you know that one where I like uh, I was catfished, but I realized when I DM this girl, I was like, hey, I thought we should take it off Tinder. She's like, I don't have a Tinder, and then you know I realized that was a great icebreaker, so I started DMing all these girls like I thought we should Hell take yeah. it off Tinder. Yeah. And anyway, somebody commented on that video like, like this is super creepy. I was like, don't worry, I made everything up. He's like, comedy is about truth telling, and it ah. shape- he's like, it shapes our culture. He was like, it shapes our culture. Ah. And he was like, if you don't realize that, you shouldn't be doing comedy. And I was proud of this one. You'll like this. I said, if you can't tell the difference between comedy and reality, you shouldn't be watching it. Come on. That took me a while, though. That took me a while to think (laughs) of. I was sitting there, like, pissed off, like, should I call him a boob or should I, you know, like, should I say this? I was like, yeah, boob wouldn't have worked. That wouldn't have worked. Did did he respond to that? Uh, Well, after I said that, I just stopped. Oh, okay. I stopped looking at the. I stopped seeking out the. I get the truth to com- there is truth to comedy, you know. Um, you know, if you go, hey, fat people, whatever, and you don't want to be mean to fat people, but there are truths about fat people, and that's what makes the joke funny. Like I have a joke that uh, David Spade also did later, but it was um, a women. Women always go, hey. you Caitlyn Jenner is beautiful and I go yeah yeah you look like her and they go fuck you yeah because they actually are lying you know so the truth the fact that that's this truth to that is what makes that funny but if it's a story or a scenario sometimes you gotta bend it or make up a new thing just to get a laugh but it is cool like I, I, you do when you point out hypocrisy and jokes and stuff like it I find myself like you know you take that with you in life and you think about it again like, I think that's really cool yeah. I just think it's like you have to be mature enough when watching to know the difference between what is a joke and what it like. I'm yeah, not, of course. Which yeah. You know, this needs to be true to this bit. You're like, well, the most classic joke on the planet is the chicken crossing the road. There's no chicken. Yeah. It's all made up. There's no road. It's just a thing a, a guy thought of or a girl. Right, right. But yeah, but yeah. Somebody had a great joke about uh, you know, people always say like that astronaut. What's that guy's name? Or a woman? You know, they always do the or a woman. But they never do that for bad stuff. So there's a lot of male serial killer, the this, this serial killer guy, whoever he was, or girl. You yeah, know, it's, it's yeah. always the good ones. It's an astronaut or whatever. It's never a serial killer. Well, that's what I wrote that down too when I was watching uh, your special. Was like you're good at, you look at the reverse, mm. which is cool. I I'm don't try- know what that means. Like like with the, hold on, I wrote it down, somewhere here. 
This is all swastikas, folks. <laughs> yeah, well. I know. It says Holocaust right here. Because you're one <laughs> oh, bit. Oh, yeah. Well, it was your bit about who's the photographer taking all yes, those photos. Yes, yes. Which I heard that again today because I was listening again. And I was like, it's funny because I forgot that I heard that. Because the one I was trying to do was like about Ep like the Epstein. Like everybody gets mad at who's, about who's photographed with Epstein. But nobody talks about who the photographer was. Oh, that's funny. Well, yeah. But then I, I heard, heard your bit. I was like, oh, shit. Like the same, Like it's just thinking about the thing we're not uh -huh. talking about. Is, yes, yes. So like, yeah. Or like your bit about... Um, the other thing, like, uh, oh, giving a woman, I guess this is more taking things out of context, but like the same things you do for a woman, you know, on a date, she doesn't like in the bedroom. So, right, right. Which is like, you're just like taking some trope and putting it somewhere where it doesn't belong. And suddenly it's like hilarious. But yeah. it's also, I guess, because you're offending her. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. I don't yeah. know. Maybe I'm digging too deep in the science. No, no, no. Good science. But that's the beauty of comedy is there is a math to it. And I think we might have covered this on the last one. Yeah, yeah. There is a math to it, but it somehow still needs that magic. Like, that's why I think you'll never have robots doing good comedy. Yeah. They might they might come up with a joke every now and then, but it, it it's that magic to comedy that, like, uh, like again, I, hate, I keep bringing up Louie. He's got that joke. He's like, man, I was on a plane the other day, and there was these two babies crying, you know, and... You know, you know. Well, first, first, this is this is how good he is. He goes, I walked on a plane the other day. There were two babies. I mean, it wasn't just them. There was more people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, so he gets that laugh in there. He's the best at that, and that's what you said is like finding that thing that you're not thinking about. And then he goes, uh, Yeah, they were crying. You know, I think about gay marriage, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. marriage being legal, gay marriage being legal. And you're like, God, oh, that's so silly. Imagine two babies crying like gays yeah, can get married. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. it's so funny. But that's just that's the magic. You can't really think of that unless you're a funny person. Right, right. And he's good at like, uh, like a computer. I don't think could ever be like, like he said on like Conan. I think it was like why he wouldn't give his phone or wouldn't give phones to his kids is like you have to test out being mean in person first oh like, yeah you see somebody's face like scrunch up yes. but when you just write on a phone you're fat you put it down you're like mm, that was good <laughs> i'm like i don't think a computer could ever like be that you know totally perceptive of like human nature good point good point yeah well said something i wanted to ask you about is like the ratio of writing to performing like is there like mm, i think performing you got to do more more yeah okay. i mean because look if you write a joke uh you know you spend the time writing it that's great but you have to work that bit out and that is really the important because once you have the idea you got the nugget then going on stage, you get more information. Because mm. how are you going to know if it gets a laugh with 100 people, you know, if it gets a laugh in a room, if, it, if you don't try it in a room? You know, because you could just write a million jokes, but if you never try them, they might all suck. Right. That's good to know. Like, just because I've wondered, like, I'll, I'll do a mic, and I'll be like, well, I tried all these jokes that are new, and, you know, one worked, a few didn't, so I'm like, I guess I just got to go home and write more. But yeah. in reality, it's go and say it again and again and yes, again. Yes, yes. And the audience will tell you where to go with it by the laughter or mm. the non-laughter. Interesting. But also writing is just such a weird term. Writing. How, how much writing do you do? It's like, really, you sit down and try to think of shit or walk around and try to think of shit, and then if you think of something funny, you write that down. So writing is really thinking of shit. But we call it writing because you, you'll just catalog it so you don't forget it. Yeah. You know? A couple people do the free write where they write like 18 pages and they're like, I write it all out and it's like a vomit thing where I get something out of it and I look at it later. That's rare. But writing is just thinking, yeah. really. You yeah, because in my, like I'll do the, I tried writing out a full bit, like I was like verbatim. And I was like, I think this is funny. And then I go up there and I, it's weird how I'll know it's unfunny as I'm either about to say it or as I'm yes, saying it. Same yeah. Same. You know what it feels like? You know when you shoot a basketball and write. When it leaves your finger, you can you're like that's gonna swish. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can feel thing. it. You yeah. can feel it when you're telling a joke. You're like, this is gonna hit. But you don't have that in the in the writing room. It's not the same. Well, I think I'm killing. I have a dumb thing where I'm holding a hairbrush and I picture all the people high fiving me and going, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then I go on stage and it bombs. But uh, yeah, I usually. I think as you do more comedy, you can get that feeling more. Mm. You can, it's like a fog you try to catch. But once you get a little better and more experience, you can catch it better. You'll never catch it all the way. It's never 100%, but you get better at it. Do you get better at, 
This is like, do you get better at telling jokes tired? I, I know that's a, that's a weird question maybe, but like the best set I had, I like have like clipped multiple times from it and I've watched two different jokes of like, of two different sets and it's just like, one, I was like very energized, I felt good. I was like, damn, my delivery was really great on these. And then I'll watch other ones and if I'm tired in, at nighttime or I just feel like I'm sheepishly saying them. Yeah. I guess my question is, do you get better at like selling selling jokes every when you're time, tired every yeah time. for sure for sure yeah because eventually you'll find like who you are up there yeah and it should be natural and who you are but uh, you can also just take you can also just do that like turn it on sometimes even when you're wiped i, I was on like two hours of sleep last night i was hung over i had three sets i wanted to kill myself i was so tired but once you get on stage you can hit that switch and just do it for 15 minutes and then get off and be like ah yeah. So yeah, you just gotta know what that who that guy is. Do you feel like you have a guy when you're on stage? Like, stage you is this way and real you is this way. No. All right, it's coming. It's yeah. coming. No. You just gotta focus on what what's how do people perceive me? What's my thing? You yeah. Know, what are, what are my strengths? My weaknesses? What do I like about me? What do I want to accentuate? What do I want to hide? Right. There's definitely uh, there's nuggets in there, but uh, did you have the headphones on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they went right in. Uh. Uh-oh. Yeah, there's definitely nuggets in there, but like, like I had a friend come watch. She loves stand up, and she was like, <laughs> like she'll come. Like I don't even want her to come because like I'll have a what I think is a good set, and then she'll be like, "You're really stiff up there." I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> She's like, "You gotta like own the stage, move around more." I'm like, "Really? I gotta walk around more?" Like I like just weird things, but um. So yeah, I'm, I'm still figuring that out. Somebody, yeah, that's normal. Yeah, it take, it's gonna be like five, six years. Yeah, that's what I you, thought. You find yeah. that. I used to just open for guys, and I was like, what's my thing? I can't figure it out. And they're like, the fact that you're worrying about it is a good sign. Yeah. And uh, and then somebody gave me great advice, John Fish. I opened for him years ago. And he goes, uh, I was like, what is my thing? I can't figure out my voice. You know, Jezelnik has a voice, and, and Bill Burr has a voice. And he was like, look at your act and look what you do a lot. Like, what kind of jokes you tell a lot, what kind of angles you use, what's your point of view a lot. And that's probably a better indication of, what you are on stage that makes sense yeah but then I, I'll, I'll start to get discouraged not discouraged but like i'm like oh i'm doing that thing again like like i'll like a lot of the things i end up writing i'll be like deception of some kind like me lying to people on like like the catfish one. Oh yeah that's true right that my aunt dying and like uh i guess that one less like, well, with my TikToks, too, because, like, before I started doing stand-up, I had, like, a good, you that's know... That's true. You're and right. A lot of it is, like, me lying or, like, deceiving people <laughs> oh, that sounds for great. personal gain. Yeah, yeah, which I, like, I think is fun. Like, I, like, uh, I, like, took a Shakespeare class in college, and, like, uh, they're, like, a, the coolest ones, like, the coolest Shakespeare plays to me were, like, like, Richard III starts with, like, he's, like, this ugly guy that's, like, the brother to the king. He's super ugly. He's, like, basically, the, the opening monologue is, like, I'm super ugly. Dogs bark at me when I walk by. Women don't love me, so I'm just gonna fucking try and kill everybody to get to the, to the become king. Wow. And that stuff makes, me like, I, like, think that's so cool. Like when That people- is cool, yeah. And, uh, you know, what I thought was interesting when I was a kid was, uh, did you ever read Tom Sawyer? Yeah. He, I remember he fakes his own death and then goes to his funeral and sit, sits up in the rafters and watches everybody go, because he's like, everybody in this town hates me, I'm a bad kid and all that, they all make fun of me, and he's like, fuck them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pretend to die. And then he goes to his funeral and they're like, we loved him, he was so full of life, he was a scamp and fun and cute, and he was like, oh my god, that he falls down, that's the whole story. Yeah. But... That's that's what you got to figure out. What are people going to say about you at a funeral, kind of thing? Right. And I think I have a, a grasp on what you are. But yeah. But I could be wrong, so I'm scared to tell you because I don't want to skew. Because you should find it yourself. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. I'm curious, but I, I'll trust whatever well, you decide to do here. I, I, I don't care. But I think you come off. Uh, you're a sweet guy. You're a nice guy. A little nebbishy. A little uh, like what's the word? Soft spoken. Mm. You know, you're cute. You're nice. You're sweet. But you have a little darkness in you. Yeah, And I yeah. think when you do those little TikTok things or, or the catfish stuff, it kind of comes out a little. Right. And then everyone has that in them, too. Everyone thinks they're this piece of shit, nobody, uh, but they want revenge and they want to fight. I mean, that's basically what Twitter and Reddit is. Yeah. So I think you kind of embody that. Well, it's, it reminds that Woody Allen had a quote. I think it was like, uh, I could rob a bank, but like I could figure out, I'm creative enough to figure out how to rob a bank, so I just write about it. Oh. 
So I think that's what's cool. It's like if you have the the intelligence to like, right? Because like, on face, you know, he's a little mini Jew bald guy with glasses, and you're like, who's this nobody? Look at this twink. But in here, he's, he's yeah. King. The guys that write Saw, like they're sadistic, like they figure out the coolest ways to torture people. It's like thank God they're just you know making that a script and not, right, and right. not doing it for real. Exactly. But what's good is you have a built-in kind of underdog factor, and people love that. Uh, how so? Like, well, you know, the, they want the little guy to beat the big guy. I you see. Know, David I see. And Goliath. So like, you have a little of that be- built in. That's you don't cool. walk up on stage like the girls be. You're stiff. You're whatever. Maybe that's. Good. good. Yeah, I was wondering that too. Oh, I, mean, well, I was nervous, you know. But well, yeah, but, but maybe nervous is good. Like I think stand up, uh, you got to find your character, and I think it's taking the worst thing about you or your bad qualities and accentuating those. Mm. Look at Jeselnik, gorgeous guy, beautiful blonde hair, insanely mean spirited, <laughs> yeah. dead babies, cancer, you know, and it's all great. The joke writing's top notch as well. But he just leaned in to maybe a little of that evil in him and just put it out. Fat, all these fat comics, they're like, I'm the fat guy. Because they're like, the thing that bugs me the most about me or the thing that most people want to hide that sucks, I'm, I'm letting that out. I feel like Louie, too, he kind of opened that door. Like, I'll notice at open mics, uh, Bill Burr, too, where, like, guys will go up and just complain or, yeah. like, reveal their darkest secrets in a way that's not so funny. Yes. And I'm like, I yes. get what you're trying to do. But like Louis mastered it. I mean, I mean, you got to try it out, obviously. Sure, sure. But like, it's just funny to see the wake of Louis, where it's like all these guys going up there, like you know, I think this. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like Richard Pryor, you know, one of the greats of all time. Whether you you like him or know about him or not, the guy was this huge comedian, hilarious, lit himself on fire, and then went. He was doing free basing something and lit him, his whole hair caught on fire. And he his next special was like 30 minutes on that. And you're like, oh, my God, this guy. This is back before like TMZ. So that, that was a thing. That was a story. So then to see the guy talk about it himself, how embarrassing that is. And him running down the street, he's like, he's like, uh, people should take a match and light it and do this and go, that's Richard Pryor. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that, that was huge because most comedy back then, that was like late 70s, was a lot of like, you ever notice and uh, dogs are weird and men and women are different. And he was like, I fucking lit myself on fire. That shit was crazy. And he describes the whole scene. It's amazing. That's awesome. Have you seen that special? It's probably I, the be- one of the best specials of, of all time. I haven't seen that one, no. Oh! I've, I've seen the one. Is it on Netflix? Because I saw I the I think they bought it. Okay. It's called Live in Concert. Okay. It's incredible. First of all, he walks out and they're not seated yet. Like they're kind of like filing oh, in. Oh, okay, yeah, and yeah. He, he walks out. He's like, "Oh, N words done stole your seats." The wiper like, "Whoa, sure, that's our." You know, he does all that shit, and he's riffing on the fact that they're not seated yet. Like that's how good he was, right? In a special. Yeah, you yeah. Know? He's like, "I'm just gonna walk out now." Yeah. Like even though you, you start <laughs> yeah. rolling, that's so cool. Yeah, really good stuff. Um, did you? Did, so did you bring a bit today? That is. is oh it? sure, I got a. I got a ton. Got, let me see the notebook this time. Two but years I, later, I, it's, the same method, huh? I guess but, if it works, it works. Well, you can tell my my new stuff because the paper isn't as uh, worn yet. So mm. it doesn't look like an old treasure map that a guy pissed on. Do you not like? I guess I lose everything. So like, like if you lost that, would that? Oh, be? I've lost. I've lost it like five times over over my 50 it's devastating do you, you should take pictures of everything like before like oh uh, yeah that's not bad all right like yeah but i'd rather lose a kid <laughs> yeah yeah well um, you don't have one yet you might feel differently they say that when you have it it's like oh my god like some floodgate opens right right now let me let me try a few on you here because okay. uh some of these i need help with some are already working some i'm like an inch away okay some are i'm clueless tried one idea about how <laughs> I made a fat joke, and a guy, excuse me, I got a pube. <laughs> Crispy, Girlfriend could you, could, sorry, thank Got a you. huge bush. Um, <laughs> boy, it's right in the old yeah, yeah. semen in the throat. <clears throat> All right, I won't do that, but it's too mean. The fat one? Yeah, it's too, it's so, it's not finished yet, so it just sounds mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me try one that's working. All right, I, I read a, a study or a... Thank you. A fun fact that in the old days, like in the 1800s, we thought left-handed people were evil. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, we think we're divided now, you know, like the right and the left. Like back then they were divided by hand dominate, like hand, uh, what's your dominant hand? Right. Like, holy shit. Like we've come a long way. Like the political stuff is annoying, but 
that was like he's eating with his left hand whatever like isn't that insane that 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 guy couldn't come to your house <laughs> yeah you know and i thought maybe that could be a gay angle like you're a left hand he's like i'm born that way you know because right. i'm born that way uh but then i th- that the- none of that worked mm. I was like the conversion therapy because they ah, used to like yes. make them right with exactly. their right hand. Exactly, exactly. So that's something too. So now we got two kind of gay things. Watch there. it though. I'm a lefty, so careful uh-huh. here. <laughs> yeah, well, no. you guys are known to be creative. Yeah, yeah. Um, and pedophiles. I don't know if you. <laughs> oh, really? That no, one, that yeah. one. I. <laughs> we're <laughs> <What>? all good. <laughs> but then, well, well, that part is getting like, eh. And then the part, the other angle is, well, we've gotten a lot better because you used to be able to hit your wife. Mm. So in the same time we thought left-handed people were evil, you could hit your wife. So isn't that crazy that now you can't hit your wife and we accept left-handed people? So back then it was like, hey, that guy just hit his wife, but with what hand? Oh, that's good. That's good. It's okay. But so that that's where I'm at. I don't know. Should I go the gay conversion route? Should I go the hit the wife route? I, I'm all over the place. Okay. And like, well, uh, that's interesting. And yeah. well, could you not go both? Uh, maybe I go both. I go both ways. Interesting. And then ambidextrous people, you could be like, what is that? Is that like bi? Oh, or is that like. Oh, I like that. That's right? bi. Yeah. That's good. Um, interesting. Yeah. See, so it's almost harder when a bit has a lot of layers because they're harder to organize. Yeah. It's like a bit like you're trying to, like, yeah. Uh, and well, that's, that was the thing. I'll, I forget what bits I noticed you do it, but it's like kind of like once you know the premise, it's like you kind of ask yourself questions, I yes, feel like. It's yes. like, what else does. Right. Conversion or like what else do they do to gay people when they didn't like them or what else did that like you start. Yeah. So you could like bring it into the. Totally. Totally. Yeah. You're right. I heard they tie your hand behind your back. So you, they make you use your right hand. Right. Which is like conversion therapy. Yeah. Right. Or they thought you were like a witch or something if you were left handed. Yeah. Heard that before. Totally. But that's totally accepted now. Like it shows that progress is made. You know, yeah. we, we don't even think about a lefty. I don't give a shit that you're a lefty. You and it makes you wonder what is is there anything of today that a hundred years from now or a thousand years from now they'll be like they really thought you know you couldn't do that like mm-hmm yeah yeah right huh and then the hit your wife thing is fun I like that one you like that yeah I do okay that feels like that part is hitting the most yeah out of all of this that's what's inter- I, I'll notice like a premise. You'll think of pre- like when you were telling me the hand stuff in the beginning, like before you got to the punchline. I was like, this. If I was writing that joke, I would have thought those were all laugh lines. But then I feel like once you get up there, I guess you say it. And you're like, oh, this is just an idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, you need a hard turn for it to get a, a real involuntary laugh. But I thought my initial thought was left-right politics, mm. left-right hand, left-right politics. It's perfect. It's right there. It writes itself. But that got nothing. So that yeah. just tells you like. You think it's this way, but it's not. Well, left leftists are also like they're creative people often. Oh, like true, famous true. people are lefty or on the left, liberal. Right, right. Gay. Sure. You said to me when we did the one show, I like told you about a bit. I was like, yeah, I was just kind of like afraid to say it. You're like, stop being a pussy. I'm like, oh yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, say it. I mean, they might not laugh or they might get mad at you, but then you leave the stage and go home. Yeah, and it's also like. Like at open mics, if they don't laugh or they get mad, I'm like, well, that's like part of like. It's part now of I it. know. Now, now you I know, know. That you don't like it. You're getting data. It's all data. That's why it's so annoying too when people are like, that joke is offensive. You're like, I know, but I'm not done. You got to let me fix finish it. It's like saying, that's not a house, and you're like, I know, I'm building the frame. You know, like let me put a roof on it and a door and a window. Yeah. Here. Like, you're seeing the beginning stages. You don't know where I'm gonna go with this. Yeah. Yeah. Comedy's hard because we're first of all we're sensitive. The whole art form is based on feedback, mm-hmm. you know? And then so when you get feedback of a, of a guy being like, hey, I'm going to, you know, get you in trouble or you're a racist. And you're like, whoa, uh, my whole point is trying to get laughs here. And uh, like, this is the feedback I'm getting. Right. This, this is it scares you a little bit. And it but at the same feelings. time, it's like maybe necessary feedback. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Like, so I'll see. Listen. There's like one of the ones I like is uh, the open mics is like this coffee shop. And there'll be girls on computers that are uh-huh. like, and they'll be mad when people say certain things. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I, I, I mean, I guess it's like, it, now I know that's going to happen. Like if I, yeah. if I put it online, those, those kinds of people will be pissed. You totally, know? Like, totally. It's just so fascinating that someone would get mad about that. Like, I'm like, what a weird lifestyle, what a weird brain you have that, you know, 
Chad Daniels, uh, we might have talked about this the last time, but Chad Daniels had this great point where he does a joke about, like, buttholes or shit or diarrhea, and half the crowd groans and half the crowd laughs, and he goes, it must suck to have your brain, like, to the, to the groan side. Yeah. They hear a thing and feel good and enjoy it, and then you go, oh, or boo, or whatever, and you're like, you have a, lo- you have a shittier life than them. Yeah. You know, and that's a, just such a great point. I, uh, I, well, I was thinking the other day, I don't, it, uh, not really a bit, but just, like, PC people are kind of like the HR of society where it's like yeah. you kind of need that, but you don't invite them to like parties and have, <laughs> have fun with them. And you need it, but I think you can go too far too. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. You can overcorrect or over or over, um, you know, emotionalize it. But that, I had a joke. Uh, I did the LA Netflix fest and my opening joke, the blind guy joke, there was a lady with a guy in a wheelchair and she was like, that's insensitive to disabled people. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But so what? Yeah. There's a guy over there in a wheelchair who likes it. So, like, g- just leave. Or or why do you why do you get to tell us what's – you get to deem what's inappropriate? You yeah. know? Like, if you don't like it, just leave. I, I don't know. It's weird that, you know, she thinks she has this power of, like, that's inappropriate. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's inappropriate. I mean, in a it's movie where you yet. shoot a guy in the head – or hang a guy, it's it's inappropriate, but it's part of the movie. Yeah. You know, like, just don't watch the movie, or don't go, that movie should cease to exist. Yeah, you don't yell at the screen in the <laughs> theater. Yeah, right. I hate when people say, like, oh, comedy comedy shouldn't punch down. I'm like, maybe don't call it punching. Maybe that's not Ooh, what you should be calling it. Like, yeah. it should just be, like... And who's to say who's down and who's up? Yeah. You like, know, we go, like, hey, you're making jokes about Asian minor- minorities, and you're like, well, there's more Asians than white people. Yeah. I mean, no, Asians are doing better than white people, excuse me. So mm. it's kind of like you're calling them this marginalized group or whatever uh, or punching down on Asians, but, like, Asians are doing better than honkies. So, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, it's like what is the – I see what you're saying. And then, yeah. But I did see uh, a clip of George Carlin saying, like, basically the pun- – like, essentially the punching down thing. It's like, oh, comedy should really, like, attack the upper pe- – and I was like, ah, oh, damn, he said that. Like, nah, well, like, he also had – 300 re- retard jokes and uh he called feminist cum catchers he had the n-word a lot so i get his point but he still didn't it didn't stop him from doing yeah it. <laughs> yeah that makes sense i like the left hand bit one i, I think that all right you think yeah, there's something yeah there? I'll, i think I'll there's something there for sure especially as a lefty i'm like i'm interested in that it's been like the history of it's interesting just the fact that like yeah, why cool the hell fact. did they care? Yeah, yeah, why did they care? Like, what? Who, who was the first guy to be like, wait a sec? What, what, right, <laughs> right. Know? And then how did that go away? Was there like a march, you know, where all these left-handed people were <laughs> yeah. holding signs with their left hand? You know? <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. That, see, that could be something. Was there a march? Yeah, okay. I like that too. I like that too. Now we're writing. See, that's writing. It's not this. Yeah, it's that's just like writing. talking it out. Yeah. yeah. Now you're an online cum guzzler, so let yeah. me let me run this question by you. So I have a couple bits because we go we go so especially me I'm so obsessed with the laughs is that gonna laugh is that hitting is that working, but I have a bit that I was really proud of and it took me a while to write but it never hits that hard it gets like an okay laugh mm-hmm. and I said well let me just burn this I'll put it online because I want to take it out of the act because it's not hitting as hard as the other stuff killed online kill and like. I'm getting all these comments, this is brilliant, what the hell, oh my god, this is great, what a great, this is one of my favorite bits of his now, and I'm like, what? It was, bom- not bombing, but it was getting like a meh yeah, laugh, yeah. so I gave, I gave it up, so maybe the laugh isn't the most important thing, but that's risky to say, because you don't want to be the guy who doesn't do that well, so what, yeah, what do you think yeah. about that? Well, what was the bit? My friend's broke, he just bought a Peloton, you ever see one of these things? $2,000 for this thing. Could you imagine explaining a Peloton to someone in a third world country? Whoa, 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 you spent two grand on a bike? Must be pretty fast. Nah, doesn't move. <laughs> doesn't move. Oh, no, you know, it just sits in the living room. Oh, it sits in the living room. So when you pedal it, it must generate power for your home. No, use a lot of power. It's got a big screen on the front. Big screen. Oh, so when you usually watch funny TV shows? No, actually, a better looking person screams at you the whole time. <laughs> Well, this thing sounds terrible. What's the upside? Well, you know, eat too much takeout, you got to burn some calories. Whoa, whoa, what's takeout? Oh, that's where a guy on a bicycle brings food to your house and you pay him. (laughs) Wait a minute. This guy's got a real bike and you give him money? Why wouldn't you just do that? What am I, a fucking immigrant? (laughs) Yeah, I did. Well, it's a long bit about, uh, can you imagine people from a third world country, um, like, explaining them a Peloton? 
Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, I did see that bit. And they're like, uh, they're like, oh, wow, you spent, how much is this thing? And they're like, oh, it's two, two thousand, three thousand, three thousand dollars for a bicycle. Must be pretty fast. No, actually, it doesn't move. Uh, what? It doesn't move. He's like, yeah, yeah, you just pedal it, you know, and oh, you pedal it in your house, so it generates power for the home. You know, he's trying to figure out why you would have this thing. And you're like, no, 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 it just, uh, it uses a lot of power, actually. It has a big screen on the front. Big screen. Oh, so when you, you use it, you can watch funny movies and stuff? No, no, actually, a better looking person yells at you. And then I, I had all that, and that was doing okay. And I know I, I was like, I need another element. Usually when you can't get a bit to work, you, an, an element has to come in mm. to, like, give you another angle. So I was like, uh, so then I, this took forever to think of. And, uh, you know, it's like, no, it has a big screen, and, and you know, you got to burn some calories. That's why we use it. I want to burn some calories, which is crazy to a third-world starving person. Why would yeah. you want to burn calories? And they're like, you know, you eat some takeout, so then you got to go burn calories. And the guy's like, what's takeout? Oh, that's where a guy on a bicycle brings food to your house, and you pay him. Yeah. And that hits. And then uh, the problem with that joke is not every city has these guys. It's very New York. Yeah, they yeah. They have cars, Uber Eats. It's all car delivery, pizza delivery, you know. But it works in New York. So uh, the guy comes to your house on a bicycle, and you pay him. So then the uh, the third world guy's like, wait, he has a real bike that works, and you give him money. Why wouldn't you just do that? And then the ending is, well, what am I, a fucking immigrant? Yeah, you yeah. Know, which is like kind of an easy ending, but uh, well, it I sums it all up. Please, please. Yeah, well, I think it's like maybe it doesn't get that audible laugh, but like w something I've noticed from doing open mics is like uh, basically l well, what I'm trying to r remind myself is just because people aren't laughing doesn't mean they're, you know, they, they're sitting true. there hating you, right? True, they're like, true. and so I think it's like perceptive and it's like says a lot about our society or whatever. So people online maybe they're not looking at their phone laughing but they're like damn that's a great point it's funny uh -huh. and maybe that's what my theory would be okay but it, I, it's nice to hear but like we are trying to get laughs out there yeah yeah you know? i know that's so true it's, it's a tough it's a tough spot because you're like everybody likes this bit it's it's maybe poignant and people will resonate with it but it it if i'm killing and then it, it dips with that bit then i gotta get them back right so right it's tough and but. then i was i always wonder too like if you're a bit is too perceptive or deep like do you like say it and they like it so much that now they're zoning out thinking about what you said <laughs> i've that, had that too yeah, yeah like, like, i missed the last bit because you were you were still i was still thinking about the other one right right interesting i um i brought one that i thought yes you could help i was i don't know what, so well basically like i have a friend that died and i couldn't figure out how so i went on google and like looked up her name and I found this obituary and it was on an obituary like website but I had to put in my email so now this obituary website <laughs> is emailing me like hey here's another obituary like that one ah, yeah. recommending obituary yeah. like Amazon if yeah. you like that obituary you <laughs> yeah. might like this obituary <laughs> yeah. and then right. I kind of get a laugh there then I just don't know where to, I was thinking maybe like the thought process should be like what else what other emails do you get unsolicited right right yeah well or, I think you got to I think you got to go the comparison of the parallel of when you buy shit online, they keep sending you, oh, you bought those bath towels. You might also like this throw rug. Yeah, you yeah. You know, and uh, it's just weird to do that with deceased people. Yeah. You know, it's also weird that you had to put in a web, you had to put in your website. It, well, to get an I, I kind of lied. I, oh, okay. It was like this website where you like can see the funeral live streamed or something. What? It's, it's even creepier. Now yeah. That's funny too. You got to put that in. Okay. All right. Cool. Who's live streaming a funeral? Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. Is that necrophiliac porn? That's like uh, OnlyFans for necrophiliacs. Like, oh, it's yeah, a coffin. yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah, like who's at home watching that for sure? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, like so. Um, so, but there's like, a lot here, right? Uh, and then the other thing I noticed, I started looking up obituaries to like be inspired. But one thing I noticed was that some of them are copyrighted, and I was like wondering who's stealing the obituaries. You know? <laughs> right, right. You know, you could read one and go, "Oh, that's good. I'm gonna put that on Kathy." Yeah, you know? yeah. But then it was, it was like you said, where I feel like there's so many channels right, where I'm like, I right. don't know where to go now. I'm like, oh, I could like start writing obituaries or like i was like thinking oh maybe i got a job with them it's like ah, that doesn't really make sense or i'm like because like right now it's just like kind of passive it's like well i could just keep talking about these things that i'm reading from them or yeah like, you know like 10 best obituaries this week or whatever but i'm like i don't know where to go beyond that yeah okay well let's try to stick with the meat of it 
You know, sometimes you got to go right to the the core of what's funny about this. So you wanted to see an obituary. You had to put an email in, and now you're getting other obituaries. Yeah. That, to me, is the meat of it. Right. So now you're like, I'm depressed because... <laughs> I'm reading so many I'm, obituaries. Yeah, you're getting like a ping. Oh, what's up? And then, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, and also it's like, why am I reading it? Like, yeah, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Oh, maybe that could be something here. Hold on. Hold on. Facebook lets you know people's date of birth. They always go, hey, it's John's birthday. Yeah, and yeah. And now you're getting the opposite. You're getting, hey, uh, Gertrude died. <laughs> yeah. You know? Three-year anniversary. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you see the birthday post, and you're like, all right, I better write something. Yeah. You know? Now you got to go, all right, let me uh, let me send uh, Gladys <laughs> some flowers or whatever. <laughs> right, right. So there, there could be something with that. Uh, yeah, what are you supposed to do with all this death? That was my one friend. He's like, oh, you have so much death material. I'm like, oh, because it's interesting. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, fascinating. So, nothing wrong with having death material. You know, Jim Gaffigan has food. You have death. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, but no, I like this bit. I like this bit. There's a, you can go the birthday route. You can go the Amazon route. You can go the, the virtual virtual funeral is gold. The Zoom funeral, to me, is hilarious. Well, here's a weird thing that I know. So I thought that was humorous, but... I forget the exact context, but I've seen a comic talk about virtual funerals. Ah, okay. And I'm okay. just, like, afraid to even go down it because I'm like, I don't know. Especially because I don't remember who it was or what it was exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm almost afraid to, like, I don't know. Has that ever happened where you're yeah, like. Yeah, of course. Of yeah. course. I get it. I get it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll cut out the Zoom funeral. I just had a funny idea for a joke. I went to a Zoom wedding. Yeah. And I, l I forgot to unmute. Yeah. And so I was watching a sports game, and I was like, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah. and they were like, what was that? You know, it was like, uh, anyone have any uh, objectives? Yeah, I was right. Like, oh, come on, come on. Come on that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I just I just thought of that, but I'll, I'll write that down. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, so this is something. And we then I guess you'd think, like, what are things you could say at a football game that would be ho horrible to say at a wedding? Yes, yes, like, exactly, you know, exactly. That's not fair. That that doesn't count or something. Yeah, uh, there's some line where you're like, line. it perfectly goes together yes, with the both. Yes, yes. See, I can get it you, sometimes. You got it. I know you how it, it works. Uh, tackle him. You know, yeah, something, <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah. something. Uh, but this bit, maybe there's something to a f you. You have a friend, another friend die, or or you have a, a mutual friend, and they're like. You hear uh, Bob died, and you're like, "Yeah, I have the app, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have yeah, the thing. It's like, there. Did, I, did I know Bob died? You know." I liked your Tom Sawyer story because I thought of this bit because I was like, "Oh, you could just buy obituaries," and so I was like, "You could either buy an obituary for somebody you're pissed at." Like, I was like, "I get hate on YouTube sometimes," so I'm like, "If I bought an obituary for some hater, uh -huh. or like when they die, yeah, you get to have it." Well, it was more like if I just privately emailed them this obituary like oh, anonymously of their no, date. That's a threat. Yeah, well, then it's not even as funny as it is just like, oh, that's creepy, you know, like. But that's very you because it's all about, you know, deception. Yeah, yeah. Or <laughs> or if I bought an obituary for my, or I was, yeah. Hmm. Okay, okay. Well, we're not, we're not, we're not giving up on this. It's very easy to give up on a bit. Yeah, yeah. Because it just requires that mental effort of life. Yes. I think another element is needed. Uh, obituary. It's a funny word, obituary, too. Yeah. All right. You know about all the deaths. You know, people are like, did you hear about... Uh, you, you don't know about Ukraine. You know about uh, Boris. Like, you <laughs> yeah. know about the individuals that died. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm updating. Like, that's my daily read. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, where does it end though? Like, wh what do you get? S is it a county you're getting the deaths in, or like? They never emailed me. Oh, okay, I just okay. put my email in, and I was like, "What are they going to email me?" I, I had to make you. an account. Oh, okay. Well, that's funny though. That's yeah. that's where the comedy comes in. All right. Well, this is great pod sitting thinking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, how about this? This could be an angle, like. Now you know about all the funerals and the obituaries, so now you can go to funerals and, and meet ladies. Okay, yeah. You know, just just to bring something else in. Right, right. Like, like, yeah, the, and that's like the cause and effect sort of thing where it's like if that's happening, what else would happen or what could happen? Right, right, yeah. Like, or if, like, somebody's going through my email or, like... Yeah, oh, you got wedding crashers, funeral crashers. 
you show up, everybody's crying. Did they did they cover that's that? In the movie? The movie. Oh, that's in the movie. Yeah, oh, I know, shit. I know. That sucks, but yeah. Okay, okay. Will Ferrell is like the funeral crasher in it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Because <laughs> he's like, oh, I haven't been going. Like, Owen Wilson, like, decides to stop going to weddings. He's like, I got this buddy. <laughs> yeah, they just go to funerals. Ah, that's a funny movie. But we're on the right track. We're on the right track. Yes, yeah. yes. We're getting somewhere. All right. Uh, whose idea was it to start, you know, death literature or whatever? Right, right. Yeah, well, every, everything is online. So you want to see your friend's obituary. Yeah, I, oh, that, that, that's what I started. Like, the true thing was that I did not know how this person died. Oh, that's why you want to see And it how. didn't even say. It didn't even say. So I, I didn't know if there was a way to bring that back or, like. Yeah. Maybe, like, your your ex-girlfriend died, and you're like, let me see if she's met that new guy. You yeah. Know, she's married. Yeah, let's see. There's also something funny, too, about the obituary. They always go, loving daughter, aunt, mother, yeah. and uh, lawyer. Yeah, survived by is what it yeah, says. Yeah, survived by. It's yeah. such a weird term. You could take the Tom Sawyer route, buy myself an obituary. Well, I guess I did. I was trying oh, to like figure out how to yeah. fake my own death by buying my obituary. That's interesting. To see how people like react or like see what they post. Right, right. So I could uh, literally like comment as me, like, yeah, right. Like you yeah. didn't, you didn't like me, or yeah, maybe there's something to the angle of you have no say. Once you're dead, you're dead. Yeah. So you don't get to have any input, and they're telling you how who you were. Right. You're like, I want to tell you who I am. Right. Like, I should be able to write my own obituary. Right. Mm. Let's get this out of the way now, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. I want this to be a glowing review. I don't want uh, that that asshole who hates me down the block to write my <laughs> yeah. obituary or my mom even. And then I guess the guy, whoever you're hiring to like make it or write it, would be like, "Wait, you're alive? Like, are you like, like my thought goes like, are they are they gonna think I'm killing myself or uh -huh. something? Like, why right. would I be buying it this early? Yeah. Uh, what about something with suicide hotline? Maybe there's something with those guys. Mm. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm 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 blanking a little here. No, it's something I was saying I would get a laugh, but I had no idea where to take it. Was uh, but it's same thing as like I've been ghost writing suicide notes. Like it's a fun <laughs> idea. Like, that is fun. Getting paid to write that, but I don't know if there's like a way to merge the two. Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Do you have that happen a lot where you have two bits that like yes. kind of work, and then you realize they can merge, and then they suddenly are. Totally. Yeah. It doesn't happen too often, but I was working on this bit about how I made a fat joke, and then this guy yelled at me, and then we became friends, and then I found out later he got lipo, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. I made a joke. You you surgically removed fat from your body. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that more fat shaming? Like, you're saying I need to get rid of this. I just made a joke, and then I thought it could be something with, with trans. Like, you, I made a, a joke about trans, and then you changed... Oh, oh you, I made a joke about women you're like there's nothing wrong with women you that's that's fucked up to talk about women and then you became a man so right like, oh, right you, you you said there's nothing wrong with being a woman but then you stop being a woman but uh, yeah. it's a bit of a leap yeah yeah it's a little bit of a stretch but uh stretch mark but I <laughs> yeah think it's uh well i feel like it's the same joke done differently like with different people right or... yeah pretty much i'm trying to show the the similarities i guess yeah yeah i, like I, I can see how you would merge them but it never worked it never worked you know it's good for potting is uh when the, the the two guys filming are completely oh, bored. on their and, phones, and yeah. I'm not saying you guys have to care. I just uh, it's like it's, it's a good insight. It, yeah, yeah, that's what I assume everyone else listening is doing. Yeah, which I get. This is you know the most uh, inside baseball shit on the planet. That's what you said. Uh, knock on wood, though. But that's what you said about the last one, and people liked it. All yeah. right, all right. So we'll see. We'll see. I watched this YouTube channel, Charisma on Command, and it's like uh, I've seen those. Yeah, and yeah, he did yeah. one on Conan. He did. Yeah, it was really good. But oh, I love Conan. And he basically breaks down like what makes certain things funny. And what Conan did was like I'll take things out of context. So like, there was like a Valentine's Day bear with like a heart, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Why is this romantic? It's a bear holding a heart." And it was like, "Oh, like so cool. Like we all accept it as this thing." I love stuff like that. Yeah, and he just like yeah, he just like would like like pulled back a little bit to show yes. us why it's weird. Yeah, Seinfeld has that old bit about uh, he's like I was watching a TV and the Tide commercial, Tide laundry detergent. It's like, get out grass stains, wine stains, blood stains. And he's like, blood stains? Yeah. Who is, uh, you know, get the harpoon out of your chest first before you start <laughs> doing the laundry. Like, yeah, who's, yeah. Doing, who's washing clothes with blood stain? Like, what's going on in the family? So that was just, that's just a normal commercial. And you're like, ah, he found the nugget of, of humor in there. Right. 
George Carlin uh, said, uh, that usually you can tell when something's a bit when you just your brain goes, there's something wrong here. Right. And that's, uh, I have that joke, I don't see color. The guy goes, I don't see color. And I'm like, well, I'm black. And he's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, aha. Yeah. So it's just a quick <laughs> joke. But there's some, when someone uh-huh. says, I don't see color, you're like, I think you do. You know, there's something wrong here. You're you're full of shit or whatever. Yeah. You guys got any thoughts? Dead people. I see dead people. I once saw a chicken actually cross the road once, not to backtrack, but. Oh, <laughs> yeah. really? Yeah. So basically, it is true. Okay. Comedy is based in truth. That's what he's saying. Yeah. But the beauty of that joke is. It's the punchline is so unfunny that it's funny. That's what I was saying before about knowing the rules to break them. That's like an anti-comedy joke. Right. You know, how, why did chicken cross the road? And you're in your brain, you're going, I don't know, uh, you know, get it, kill something, maybe change, uh, change his lifestyle. It's like, to get to the other side. The joke is so, the punchline is so nothing that it's something. It almost makes me think sometimes jokes are like, almost like riddles. Totally. Where, where the totally. answer is just somehow funny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I wanted to ask too, like, how does it differ, like, doing pods versus stand up? Like, is there like a totally different? I mean, it's well, two, two different animals, but they, they, like, do you ever say the difference between pod and stand? Pods give you information and give you substance to riff on and make jokes out of. Stand up, you have to create it on your own. Yeah. Well, I guess what my question is is, is like, do you ever have? something that you're like i'm not sure if this is for the stage or if it's for a podcast totally totally yeah i i think st- podcast you gotta it's gotta be in the moment it's gotta i don't really have podcast jokes yeah because how do you know what the the subject's gonna be right I, mean, I don't know what you're gonna say so. yeah but podcasts are important because a they get people to know you and you can kind of tell who's actually actually funny yeah like deep down some people are just brilliant writers great joke smiths mm-hmm. but uh you know, if you're funny on a pod or something like that, it's like, oh, this guy actually is, like... I'd want to hang with him. Yeah, genuinely yeah. funny. It's it's in him. He's he's talented. That's cool. Anybody can put an act together. You know, you get 50 years, you can put 10 minutes together. Do, do your friends ever get annoyed, like, if you have to, like, stop to write something down? No, they get it. They get they it. They get it. They get annoyed when I keep running and buy. Like, is this anything? Is this something? They're like, dude, we're ordering. Sushi yeah, right now. yeah. Like, you know. I had to stop city biking the other day. Like I was like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, good for you. Yeah, I was like, let me just put something in this in my phone real quick. And Hell yeah, that didn't work. So, <laughs> so I could have kept biking, but um, yeah. ah, obituary. It's it's looming over me. Really? Yeah, I want to crack it. I'm glad. That's cool. That's a good sign. Yeah. Well, see, this is also a problem. Is like I. I Fester. On yeah. A bit. My my girl's like, so what are, what are we getting for dinner? I'm like, shut up, whore. I'm thinking about <laughs> <Yeah>. obituaries. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I, and then it's like if they derail the thought right when you were about to think you. Oh, you're like, oh, brutal, please. brutal. How about when you forget to write something down? You know, oh, like, yeah. oh, you're like, oh my god, I just had a brilliant thought, and then you're like, all right, I'll I'll work on that later, and then later you're like, I didn't write it down. What the fuck was it? Ah, oh, it's the worst. Yeah, yeah. Like you might have lost a closer there. Or you don't write down enough information. Yes, yes. It just says, uh, you know, jizz rag. You're yeah. Like, ah, what was my point with the jizz rag? Obituary. You want to see your obituary? You put the email in. They email me. They email you. I'm thinking Amazon route. You know, it's like, like drones you... coming to my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or like you're just a delivery guy of some kind. Yeah, it's funny because when I was a kid, obituaries were in the newspaper, and I would read them. Yeah. Because I was just like, oh wow, that lady died. She was 88. Wow, she was 14. Whoa. Yeah. She, you know, and it was kind of like the early true crime. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe that could be something. True crime. Hmm. Nah, because some people just die of old age. Like who reads them? I'm like, well, probably older people because mm-hmm. they like want to know who's still you know what i mean like they're the one they're the only ones that read it is like the old people yeah because they're like that's how they figure out who's dead or not here we go i got it okay Uh, i got i got something all right let's see let's see uh you're gonna hate it obituaries are tinder for old people let Mm. me see who's available oh Uh oh margaret died all right well that's like her being in a relationship you know she's not available or you go for the widow Oh, the widow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. you go All for right. the other one. Now we got something here. Now we got obituary, because it, it's got a bio. 
that's you know, that's it, why you want the emails because yes, you're like, I need to yes. know. Yeah, you're like, yeah. So what's some what's some? You got Tinder, you got Bumble, you got uh uh e eHarmony. What is it? Hinge. Hinge. Yeah. Cringe. I'm oh, I see. So funny now we have two things to compare yes, again. Yes, right. You exactly. have like the dating app and the. Now we're off and comparing. Yeah. Because this this bit is is interesting, but it needs. Something's got to come in here to shake it up. Yeah, that's what element. I realized. I kept going down like, ah, uh, like, like I just kept trying to work. That I see what you mean about bringing in that second element yeah. to like, like with the with the Peloton bit, it's just I was just comparing. You know, the the uh, the, the the poor guy is confused. Uh, well, why? But why? And that wasn't enough. And I had to bring in the takeout aspect. And now I got a guy on a real bike. Right. You know, so you got to bring in another aspect. So I think maybe they, uh, it's kind of like a reverse Tinder for old people. They're seeing who's av still available. Oh, shit. Is, I wonder if Margaret died. You know, they're in the old folks' home. Yeah. I'm like, hold on. Let me check my uh, obituary app. No Margaret. I'll yeah. give her a call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be something. Yeah. And yeah. then I guess you're, like, rooting for the death of some people, like, so they're single, you know? Like, like the other uh, widow. Oh, the is, widow. The yeah, widow. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Oh, that's good. You're like, come on. Like, you're right typing in the name. Like, yeah, oh, Margaret. Yes. You know, or, or Jim, he died. Right. Like, like, you ever have a crush on a girl, and you're like, ah, she's still with Bob, or, or is that over yet? You, and then your friend's like, they broke up. You're like, yeah, that's what the obituary is. Right. It lets you know who's available. Yeah. It's widow wise. Like, it's like stalking Instagram to see <laughs> yes. if they still follow each other kind of thing. I think we got something here. I, th I think so, too. All right. All right. But now it's up to you to... Yeah, no, I would, I would, together. thank you. That's cool. I mean, if you like that, I don't, don't feel no, like no, 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 I definitely, definitely like that. Uh, but, but uh, this is the part nobody does. Nobody's willing to hack away. Hack's a bad word, but you know, nobody's way to, willing to chip away. They go, oh, bitch, I thought I had someone obituary. It never went anywhere. It's like, no, no, you never went anywhere. Right. You never took it anywhere. Yeah. And that's the hard part because it takes a little bit of work. It and takes discipline. not having a phone in your hand. Yes. It's just like sitting there bored. And exactly. Like, and that's why comedy is, is, is fun to watch and impressive because you go, how the hell do you think of that? Yeah. You know, how'd she think, how'd she come up with that? It's like just imagining, like, yeah. Um. Well, you helped me so much with well, the left hand, and now we got to go back to that. <laughs> well, I got others, but yeah, that one's uh, that one. We, feels you got like a some new bit. things in there that you seem to enjoy, in terms of like ambidextrous. Yeah, and that's fun. The conversion buy. therapy sort of. Th we can use both hands. He's by. Yeah. yeah, that's something. All right, what about this idea for a bit? So people talk about slut shaming. You know what the best time to be slutty was in like the Aztec Native American times because they used to sacrifice virgins to the gods. They'd throw them in a volcano. Oh. So I'd be the biggest slut on the reservation. You know? <laughs> That's great. The chief yeah. comes up, how? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ma'am, uh, the crops are dying. We got to, we got to, are you a virgin? We got to throw somebody in a volcano. She's like, what do you got? I'm a huge whore. <laughs> I'll huge. blow you right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have a couple of tags. Like I give the best arrowhead on this side of the wigwam and uh, <laughs> yeah. I put the hoe in Navajo, you know. <laughs> now those are just silly you could also lines, like, but yeah, like you'd be like, I could see somebody being like, you only had to do it once. Like you're not a virgin. After. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. it's yeah, like, yeah. why do you keep having <laughs> sex with people? <laughs> I think it's a deeper problem. That's a good way to, because I need, I need a way to end it. Before I thought this is pretty smart of the Incas, because they were like, we'll get rid of the prude chicks and keep the whores. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. But that that didn't work. You know that reminds me of the story I heard the other day. Like this, uh, this guy kidnapped. Well, here's what happened. This guy gets kidnapped, and his girlfriend, like, witnesses it. She, like, goes to, like, they're driving down a road. They see a uh, roadkill. He's like, I'm going to go look at that. She's like, okay. And he doesn't come back, and she, like, goes to find him, and there's a guy in, like, a ski mask. He ties her up, brings her, like, hours away in a car, bit, digs a hole in front of her, puts her in it, walks away, right? You're following? Then, like, a few minutes later, her boyfriend comes naked, like, running. He's like, we got to get out of here. I escaped. I found a knife. And, like, along the way, they find, like, a, a sleeping bag. They find, like, all these resources, and they're in the woods for a week. And they, like, keep going in circles. And finally, they, like, find the road, and they, they go, get home, and the, the cops are interrogating them. And the cops realized the guy that kidnapped them was the boyfriend. Uh -huh. He, like, and the reason he did it was because his girlfriend was a devout Christian, and they were getting married in a year, and she wouldn't have sex until they got married. But his thought was... If we're in a sleeping bag naked every night, I'll tell her we have to have sex to stay warm. And 
this was uh, this is a true story. He devised this whole weird ass plan to have sex with this Christian girl, and she wouldn't do it. Didn't give it up, which is I th- it was pretty wow. cool. Wow. Yeah. Oh, well, there's that's there's a lot of comedy here. Yeah, but it's, it reminded me of the Inca thing you said, oh, where yeah. they're like, you know, they devise this random like, oh, we'll just sacrifice virgins. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they'll have sex with us. Right. 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 <laughs> Wow, that just shows what guys will do to get laid. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. What a story. He did all that. Just, uh, yeah, in Australia they that happened. You could do a joke where the girl's like, you can do all this and you can't plan dinner? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I, I always say, oh, where should we eat? And you're like, I don't care. I don't know. You're <laughs> yeah. like, come on, make a plan. <laughs> Women always love a guy with a plan. <laughs> yeah. So that could be something, too. Like, at least this guy can plan. <laughs> yeah. He, he does what he says, you know, like a lot of guys are like, oh, I'll call you at eight. And they never call. They forget to text you back. They don't make a reservation. He this follows. guy he follows through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, hey, you, they went on a camping trip. You know, girls are like, you <laughs> yeah. never take me anywhere. <laughs> this guy's like, I took we, you camping and, yeah. and uh, put you in a, in a uh, shallow grave. <laughs> yeah, like so fucked up. I don't, I don't, but I don't, I don't know if they got married after that. I don't, the story ended there. <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it, right? That's good stuff. All and I, right. I was proud of her. I was like, good for you for not giving up your Christian values. Because yeah. she was like, God will save us. Ah, yeah, so much for that God. He also put you with that guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. But also, that is like a bit. You think it's one thing, you think it's one thing, and then it turns out the guy is the dude. Right. So that's like a, that's like a, a misdirect. Right. So Life wrote it, though. Life wrote it. But that's why it's so interesting. Same with the the coda, like God. Yes. God gave Beethoven. He was deaf. That was like God's. That's another great one. It's like a sketch that he wrote. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And also, it's funny when things work out perfectly with their names, like Anthony Weiner. Yeah. Bernie Madoff. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy when it just lines up perfectly? Usain Bolt. Bolt. Another well, great one. I th- I only knew that off the top of my head because there there was like some. I forget where I saw this, but basically sometimes people do end up living up to their names, like weirdly enough. Sure. So, but I, I don't know that, you know, he was like, my name's Bolt, I have to run fast. But right, right. It was just like coincidental. But Also, there's trillions of people on earth. Something, something's going to line up eventually. Yeah. You know, my middle name's Widecock. So, you know, it's just weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just somehow it works You turned that fact into a bit pretty quick, yeah. <laughs> huh? What? Oh, oh, Earhart. Oh, yeah, that's a good, good one. one. All right, you're up. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. Ah. <laughs> okay, good stuff. I like the Aztec one, too. All right, I'll wear, I like your ending on that. Yeah. The, the, um, the, you don't have to fuck everybody. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just one will do. Yeah, yeah the guy, maybe it's like his wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I like, just want to stay alive for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Smart to sacrifice those virgins, too. Get rid of them. Sorry, I cut you off. You were about to add something to the wife thing. No, no, I had oh, okay. nothing. I had nothing. You didn't cut me off. You're good. Uh-huh. But yeah, I got a million, and, and I feel like some. I've been trying to look at my phone less. I got a notification. You've looked at your screen this week. You know, thirty eight percent less, which is a nice dip. You know, that means like hours probably. Yeah. So I've been I've been coming up with more jokes. Really? Yeah. Boredom. Choose, Boredom. Choose to be bored. That is the key, and these guys probably came up with three hours of material. <laughs> yeah, while they were sitting yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so boredom is good, and and we call it boredom, but you know maybe it's just your bl- your brain having to play a little and and and, and fucking around up there. So uh, in the in the last one we did this too, which is uh, you got two shows tonight. Three. Can I film one of them? Sure. Which one? Uh, well, you know what's interesting is. I'm doing a show at 8 on a roof, and then I'm doing a show at 10 called Stand Up on the Spot, which is you stand on stage and people go, Biden, or whatever, abortion, and you have to do stand up on the spot based on that subject. I love a good prompt show. Yeah, and it sells out. It's like a huge following. Like Rogan does it. Like it's big, big names do it, and they're doing it in New York. The guy's Jeremiah lives in LA, and he's in New York, so he's doing it. And uh, I'll be on that. I could be a plant there. Aztecs. <laughs> ah, oh, that would be hilarious. But I'd feel guilty. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, at 10 o'clock, 10.30, I'm at the cellar for uh, hot soup. Why, why am I allowed to film yeah. there? Yeah. Well, if I, if, I, if I hire you or if I'm, you know, you're with me. You're yeah, good. yeah. All right. If you don't mind me coming to that one, I'll do Come that by. one. Come by. It's a little late, but. Yeah, I, it's funny. I have a 7 a.m. flight hey. tomorrow, but it's fine. It's for this, so. 
I gotta write down that virgin thing you said. Cool. Don't have to bang everybody. That's sick. Uh, do you do you want to plug something here before uh, we we? I mean, you could plug it tonight as well. Do like a post show. Sure. I'll just plug uh, out to lunch on YouTube. We just hit 10 million views. So uh, congrats! I saw that. Thank you. Very exciting. Uh, in less than two years, so I'll take it. And then uh, you got two podcasts. We might be drunk. Tuesdays with stories, and I have my own Patreon where I do a comedy class with uh, a bunch of comedians all over the world. We got a guy in Israel, a guy in Russia, a guy in uh, you know all over the country. So we just work it out, and I do it my own podcast, and uh, I do a video every week of where I go on the road. I'm on the road every weekend, yeah. so we do a little vlog. No, I, I'm lucky enough to have the direct access here, but uh, as you can see, you're really good at helping with jokes, obviously, uh, so definitely we'll get in that comedy class. I feel like at a point, especially after this, you might you might have to cap it. I don't know. I know. It's it's up to like 40 people now. And really? everybody want Everybody throws out a bit, and we try to fix each person's bit. That's the whole class. And it's getting it's hours now because, you know, that, that adds up. Cool. So, yeah, it's fun. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do – more of this with comedians or whatever, but this was a fun something. So if well, you got, you it's know. cool. You're doing comedy now, so now it feels like before it was almost like a tutorial. Now it's a more of a convo, convo writing sesh. Yeah, um, yeah. Because the original idea was to do it with all different kinds of artists, but now I'm just like, ah, people really like the comedy one. I'm like, that that was the coolest thing to me anyway. And yeah. it's like you don't need a guitar or something. Right. We can just kind of <laughs> right. put our brains together. So exactly. So basically, what I'm saying is, if you like it. Just comment that you like it and ask for more, and that'll be incentive to maybe do more. So. And sorry if it was boring. I know that's deep, deep inside shit. Cool. All right. I'll see you tonight. Thank you, guys. Praise Allah. Comedy. <laughs> Saw somebody get slut shamed the other day. Man, I hate seeing slut shaming. You know why? Why do we make women feel bad for being promiscuous? That's crazy. It's 2022. I say slut it up, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, see those sluts get it? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know what the best time to be promiscuous was in Native American time? Like the Aztecs, you know? Because they used to sacrifice virgins to the gods. They'd throw them in a volcano. Man, I would be the biggest slut on the reservation. <laughs> you know, the chief comes up. How? Hey, ma'am, uh, we need to throw you in the volcano. Are you a virgin? No, huge whore. Huge whore. <laughs> what, are you kidding me? Come on. I give the best arrowhead on this side of the wigwam. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking to the wrong lady. I put the hoe in Navajo, all right? Yeah, yeah. I fucked the whole tribe. He's like, all right, well, you know, you just fucked one person. You know, I fucked the whole. Okay. All right. Could be something there. Okay. I'm doing no. You know, we, we hate to admit this, but we made a lot of progress in a minute. We've come a long way. Like, like uh, 150 years ago, it was cool to beat your wife. That was totally fine. That was, like, normal. And they hated left-handed people. They thought they were evil. Now it's not cool to beat your wife. And it's cool to be left-handed. You know? yeah. Isn't that weird? Like back then, some guy hits his wife. He's like, that guy just hit his wife? He did. But with what hand? <laughs> <laughs> Better be the right hand or I'm going to be pissed. You know? <laughs> Didn't care about the wife being, hey, welcome back there, sister. We, you missed a couple of good immigrant jokes. <laughs> All right. So the Native American joke did pretty good. The part Sean said bombed. So thanks for that. You leaving? Right, yeah. Thanks for hosting. Yeah. Give him hell. Comedy. And uh, the uh, left-handed thing did okay, too. It's not, it wasn't the biggest pop, so I think there might be a funnier way to say it. But I'll, I'll noodle it. Now that we know we have something, it's a lot easier to go from there. Cool. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Sean. Uh, sorry, guys, for the for Yeah, the you blew it. Tag. You yeah. blew it. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks, gang. I'll see you all in hell. Comedy.